Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to The Clone Zone. Today we're talking about episode five of season two, titled Entombed. Uh, I'm Alex Damon. Uh, <laughs> we Immediately I fell apart. Molly, <laughs> Molly a while ago was like, we should do little intros like most normal podcasts do. And I immediately forgot yeah. how to do that. And I don't know how to say my name, but I'm Alex. <laughs> and I'm Molly Damon. And Hi. <laughs> <laughs> as if no one knows who we are but well, my my point for that was going to be for the audio only listeners which i don't know how many people only listen to us in podcast form but for those of you that do and might not know who we are hello we're it's professionals Alex and Molly. <laughs> we know what we're doing we do this all yeah. the time well thank goodness we have help today uh to, to help us talk through this episode uh, we have our good friend, friend of the show. He's been on several times. Uh, please welcome Ken Plune back. Hey, Ken. I'm Alex Molly. Hi. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. You're, you're here to make us look good. So Ken you, can't even get his name fantastic. right. <laughs> no, yeah, oh, no. This is already downhill. We can only go up. Let's do this journey together. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I, I was really glad to have you on this episode because... Right over your left shoulder is evidence that uh, you are an Indiana Jones fan as well as a Star Wars fan. So that yeah. worked out. I balance the scales. We have, as we all do, as as we all should. We have it all mm. represented. Uh, uh, to, to stick with the indie theme real quick, I was going to throw up a little bit of art that our friend Brian Ward did. Uh, he does all of our thumbnails if you if you don't know and, and he just makes great star wars art in general but he, i saw that he made this on twitter uh I right mean, before we went live so if you are an audio only listener here's your reason to go check us out on youtube <laughs> because this art is perfection yeah i mean that should already be a t-shirt right oh yeah hopefully hopefully brian is working on that check out his t public store he's got a ton of fun star wars shirts on there i mean that, um, if there's any shirt that was made especially for you it's that <laughs> yeah shirt. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it'll make that a celebration. That'd be a fun thing. Ooh, that would be fun. Like a little limited edition Star Wars Explained shirt. Mm. Oh, I was thinking an officially licensed like celebration could do that. But oh, uh, oh but yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe we do that. I don't know. <laughs> maybe do the clone zone in that font. Mm, yeah, that'd be fun. Ooh. Well, before we get into the episode, Ken, uh, I, we haven't talked to you since uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think, was the last time you joined one of our live streams. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. So how while. have you been enjoying the Bad Batch? I, immensely. I mean, they're all filler episodes, so. Oh, boy. What do you get? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was Molly. I thought something went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I always think that. Uh, too much power. Uh, I was looking being... forward to the show uh, immensely. So for it to just be the enjoyable watch that I hoped it would be is enough for me. So I'm not looking for rev revelations in every episode. I don't understand how people can't see that every episode has had character development so far. So uh, it's all fun. It's all enjoyable. I'm, I'm enjoying it immensely. Well, that's I, I'm glad to hear you say that because I, I think people will be surprised. I mean, as a huge Indiana Jones lover, we got to the end of this episode and I did enjoy all the indie stuff, but I was kind of like, that was just OK. I, I, I am struggling to find what the character development was so we can talk through that together. Uh, I, I did enjoy the episode for what it was. And I, I agree, like, I don't like the term filler, but also part of me is like, but... I don't know. I I think down the line, I'll be able to look back at this episode and be like, okay, I get it. But for right now, I, I, I did wish that there was a little bit more. So yeah. question for both of you. When you're watching an episode, does it have to be character development that the characters understand and reflect as character development or that the audience sees and goes, oh, that's something that is inherently connected to these characters and is something they're going to have to face uh, to confront going forward. Because the I, thing that I tied in to what you said in your review earlier, Alex, for the show was, or for this episode, was talking about uh, the device that was used in the episode having fulfilled its function and having it relate to the clones. Mm -hmm. 
But I think even further than that, what they activate with that thing is a weapon of war. Mm -hmm. And the thing they have to go in and do is deactivate this thing because this thing can't operate in, you know, it, it already has destroyed this planet. I think we can assume based on the barren wasteland it is. So how similar is that to the Bad Batch? What is their place? You know, are they something that needs to be deactivated because there's no place for them? Or can they find a way to move beyond just being their only function being this weapon of war? I, I think that's a great point that I, I kind of related their journey to the, and the clone troopers journey to playing their part in the lead up to the death star. But I think that you just suggested that we could also consider the clone troopers right now being a bit of a weapon, especially with order 66 activated and the batch by and large, except for echo are, are kind of cool to just sit back and let that be. And maybe that's something that they could go and fight against down the line. Yeah. I, I kind of saw this episode mostly about Omega and I love episodes that kind of center in on her journey. So for me, it was really nice to see Fee working alongside Omega and like nurturing her ability to uh, go on a treasure hunt and like <laughs> improvise and like be creative and like live in the moment. And, you know, she's with the Bad Batch all the time. Not only is it nice to see her with like a woman and get some some female perspective on what she is doing, but Fee the whole the whole episode Fee was like given the clones crap because they were grumpy and Omega was having a great time and and like <laughs> just she like you pointed out Alex in your review she was like mimicking all the things that Fee was doing just like we had seen her do before with Hunter. And like Hunter seemed to be a little bit jealous and like, I don't know about this fee lady. Like, is she filling her head with nonsense? But I think by the end of the episode, after everything went down, it was like he, he gained a little bit more respect for her. I think they all did. I, yeah. I, and I think the true point of this episode was to be an introduction for fee because we met her in episode one, but we didn't know anything about her. So this was the one where we get to see that we go on this treasure hunt. She gets to the end. She gets what he want, what she wants, but she is willing to let it go for the greater good. And we see, okay, that fee may uh, talk a big talk, but deep down she is a good person. And I assume she will be a recurring character so that when we see her again, we will know that she's an ally. They already have this bond. So there is that, like, I, I do think that it did things for the the overall season mm -hmm. she's from the hondo school of piracy mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> maybe a little yeah. friendlier i don't know where like I, i'm still surprised we haven't seen hondo in this series yet but like he's someone that goes through this transition period after the empire where he loses all of uh his pirate crew he becomes a little softer and by the time we get to star wars rebels he's still a pirate but he's friendly to ezra he's not nearly as vicious as he is in the clone wars so it, he but are we seeing that I'd with like characters like fee that it seems like the sort of independent piracy is being forced out as well because then you have the rise of the syndicates really in this period right so it's sort of like you can't just have the empire doesn't want rogue pirate agents or criminal mm. agents out there they want something like, okay, well, you're with this faction, and we have a deal with this faction. Right, right. They want pirates that they can control. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's like, we're fine with you operating, but these are the guidelines upon which you have to act, and you have to affiliate. But yeah. Hondo is not going to affiliate. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, you, you then you have, and it seems like Fee is sort of in that rogue agent mindset mm -hmm. at this point. Sort of mm -hmm. freewheeling adventurer. And... Uh, yeah, but do you? Uh, I, I, I want to real quick uh, jump yeah. back to something that Molly said before we get too far away from it uh, about uh, Omega mimicking uh, Fee. Is that I, I think that it could show something that is missing from her life? Is that yeah, she has four dads, uh, but she doesn't have a mother figure, and mm -hmm. she doesn't have any 
friends her age, not that Fee is, but that we saw her mimicking Hunter because she was like, oh, this is something I want that I don't have. And now she's mimicking Fee. So we could just be seeing Omega's continued growth. And like, th that's kind of how she displays uh, that, that she needs something more and that the Bad Batch, as great as they are, might not be enough family for her. See, yeah. I, I tend to be drifting away from the assessment of the Bad Batch as for dads. Right. I mean, like, I Wrecker's like a chaotic big brother. But, but it later. seems like they're all <laughs> brothers. They're all mm -hmm. older siblings that had no childhood. They are, you know, you know, genetically <laughs> siblings, but they they had none of this childhood. So it seems more like mm -hmm. an older sibling who's looking at the younger sibling like, oh, you get to have fun. Mm -hmm. You get to relax. You get to have these things and being jealous at first and not understanding and being able to get over that. I didn't have this. You need to be tough like me. You need to, to realize the world is this harsh place. So it seems more like a sibling lessening of of this sort of tension that the bad batch and sort of discovering who they are as well because they never had you know even more so i mean uh beyond even because the the clones were created as tools not mm -hmm. people so I, you know I, I much think it's like that point. device in the in the episode yeah. they were created for a function mm -hmm. and the bad batch even more so than a standard clone were created for specific uh, specific functions I loved that, that that was one of the little mini lessons that Fee was teaching Omega. Like after she uses the compass a few times, it gets stuck in the wall and Fee tells her like, it served its purpose, you know, and it's it, it belongs here now. That is such an important lesson for someone like Omega to learn early on and then be able to apply that to other things, bigger, bigger things in life just like knowing when things are in the right place and have served their purpose. But Hunter hears that as well. He's there in that moment too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder, you know, what his processing is because he's been sort of the most uptight about not loosening up and letting, letting fun be part of the equation. The uh, record's yeah, all I'm about <laughs> yeah, I, re I really like what you said about, you know, they, they didn't grow up having fun. They never had that chance. That's a great point is that they were always soldiers from birth and that's all they were ever trained to do. They weren't trained to have fun. And so mm -hmm. it, it was or to be a fun. family hmm? or to be a family unit amongst right. themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. that was sort of a, a byproduct that was not intentional for them to bond in whatever way that they did. Yeah. Yeah. But, and I, I really family. liked how I, I just wanted to say I liked how fun that it was to watch them all learn to have fun and to be won over by Fee. So that yeah. it, at first it's all just like Omega, let's go have fun. And Wrecker seems into it. But then when they find the secret entrance, Wrecker's like, it is a secret entrance. And like he wanders <laughs> in. And then they figure out the next puzzle. And Fee and Omega and Wrecker go through immediately. And Tech is like, well, I'm interested. And he walks through. And, and he acknowledges Echo, that Fee was right about the mm -hmm. dating on it. And, mm -hmm. and Echo even gives this shrug to Hunter where like they are slowly being won over to be like, you know, this is fun. This is neat. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, since we were talking about the family dynamics and how, whether or not they're all dads or brothers, <laughs> I loved that Fee felt like the cool aunt that just kind of comes along and like Omega's just like, yay, it's Fee, yeah. it's Aunt Fee. And like she takes her off on an adventure and then later she'll just be like, all right, bye. <laughs> Back to my cool life. <laughs> I, I think that's very accurate. She's just going to come in and out of this story. She'll tell a tall tale of like, you won't believe what I just saw. Mm -hmm. And they'll do something with her and she'll be on our way again. But what is the ultimate price we have to pay with Aunt Fee? That's the thing. <laughs> like I like too that we we got to know Sid a little bit more and I'm sure we'll continue to get to know her, but I liked that this episode really uh, showed how different Fee is from Sid, that she like is willing to go on these missions with them and not just use them to get what she wants. And like, she's willing to work with them, teach them lessons, teach Omega things that like, I don't know. I, I just, I really liked fee in this one and i hope that 
she sticks around. She she seems like a nicer Sid, a nicer alternative. <laughs> yeah. Or or someone who isn't quite as prepared for what the Age of Empire is going to mean because Sid also seems like she's very much got a bunker mentality of things is things are going to get bad. I'm not going to put my neck out. Uh, you know, that is the also raises the question for the future of at a certain point, one would assume that some rogue clones running around is like prime bounty material to be dealt with by the empire and also be catch a high fee for any bounty hunters to go after them. Mm -hmm. So well, when they, the, when they represent yeah. being money for yeah. someone to make, what happens? This is a good point. Uh, where earlier in the episode, she's like, Hey, Hey muscles, Hey big guy, you know, come do this for me. And then at that one point when there's like a cave in, she pushes him out of the way so she cares about them, but she just has her own little nicknames for them. Yeah, yeah. She She's a treasure hunter, but she isn't willing to sacrifice lives for it. She saves Wrecker. She saves Hunter. I like uh, how that I, beat wasn't acknowledged in the moment. Like, she didn't make a big deal. Of, yeah. Look, I saved you. Oh, yeah. oh you owe moment. me. Yeah. yeah. Which Sid will do. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you bring up the, the idea that this bounty could be uh, something important down the line. In season one, she was very much like... Uh, we have this mutual understanding, like, I know who you are, and you're going to help me. And she just kind of holds that over their heads. So that now now we, we've seen that, I don't know, she might be changing in episode four. So that's the hope that she but won't she also, follow through with that. We've seen in episode four can put herself in a deep hole financially right. very fast. And what if they're not there in the moment to pull her out of that hole and she needs to improvise mm -hmm. some other solution? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that seems like the the anti-Sid is, is kind of what Fee seems to be right now. Just someone to, we spent an episode with Sid kind of rolling her eyes at her. And then we spent an episode with Fee still kind of rolling our eyes at her, but like in a more fun way. <laughs> It did feel with Fee that we got sort of the closest we've gotten so far to Dr. Afra mm. in the shows, like yeah. tonally what, what you would hope for, you know, maybe not as, as sort of, uh, 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 being more on the evil side. Right. <laughs> right. Afra can oh, go. There's no way Afra would have. Afra would have left them all up. for dead, taken the relic, taken left the, the yeah, yeah. Left the weapon, just ravaging the planet. <laughs> A lot of her stories and like her tall tales that she was telling, a lot of that stuff reminded me of the Calrissian Chronicles and like <laughs> just Lando's crazy stories oh, of his adventures. That would be a fun. You can't tell me they haven't played Sabek together, right? Yeah, or that, going that's to something play I'd Sabek like to at see. some point. Yes. Just them trying to one up each other's stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, now I know fun. what I want for the prequel series is just mm -hmm. Wanda Sykes and Donald Glover <laughs> having yeah. a conversation over a stomach table. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that'd be great. And we haven't heard about that series in forever, but I don't want to get too off track there. Uh, mm -hmm. I did want to just let, let's get all of the Indiana Jones stuff out of the way because I did. All, I loved all of that from especially Kevin Kiner's score. I, I feel music, like he really... Yeah really sold it home and i still don't know like it is credited as kevin kiner but the kiner brothers like i believe they all work together so i'm not sure who to fully credit kevin kiner kiner brothers you're all doing great work how many are there i don't know do we know <laughs> do we just... <laughs> well the, their twitter is the kiner brothers and so i i didn't want to leave anyone out if if the if the whole kiner clan deserves the the credit there are then 74 to give it to brothers. them yeah <laughs> they each play one note on one yeah, instrument. They, <laughs> yes, yeah. they they all are an orchestra together. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it probably starts with the music, and then I think maybe that the little compass, like that, made me think of the staff of raw. It was kind of the same size, but I don't know, Alex. You probably have a whole list in your head of of <laughs> indie connections. Well, see, I like when they were saying we're going on a treasure hunt. I was like, oh, yay, little kind of indie adventure. We, but it, once they got inside to the entrance, the secret entrance, and then the music starts playing, and I was like, this is just the well of souls. 
And then when they solved that puzzle, I was like, and this is the Tannis map, map room. Like, it, it was not exactly the same, but it gave you the exact same feeling. And yeah, it was all totally I, I, evocative. Yeah, he just crushed that. It was so good. Yeah, once that sort of wail in the background came in, I'm like, oh, we're doing this. Okay, he's leaning <laughs> into it. <laughs> all here. I'm here for it. Uh, as yeah. soon as I saw an artifact at the beginning that I knew generally what sort of tone we could take and i'm glad that it followed through on being the indiana jones episode of bad Batch. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> or or it's sort of the really leaning into jedi fallen order it reminded me right. a lot of going around to all of those archaeological sites and solving those puzzles oh mm -hmm. i'm sure we'll talk more about uh jedi fallen order Oh, uh, as, everybody's as going run. nuts. About oh, yeah, yeah. We uh, this, we will this talk about Zepho implications Zepho. Uh, <laughs> down the line. We'll get there, I promise. Um, and also, that's what tomorrow's video is all about. So you, you'll get it twice. But if you're here, mm -hmm. you get a sneak preview. Um, the, the next bit that I wanted to talk about, and I'll just bring it up because uh, I've got... This is what I drew for my drawing this week is... Uh, Hunter and Indy falling in the same trap and uh, just realizing that they're both there together because that <laughs> the, the walking through the pit trap immediately. I was like, but in the Latin alphabet, Jehovah starts with an I. <laughs> and I was, it's, it's so right, Molly. Perfect. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> this is like the third time, fourth time I've heard that impression now. And <laughs> it's great it's great every time well you really sold that it's great every time yeah <laughs> she's not tired of it i'm not tired of it i want to know what's supporting them hold the oh, picture yeah, i don't know it, <laughs> it's a I, I finished the drawing and i was like it looks like they're know. just holding a plank of wood up i love yeah, yeah. i love <laughs> the physics of it <laughs> <laughs> i should have put some of the indiana jones supports up but there was no time it's just I feel bad he's wall. doing on the dry erase boards. These things need to be preserved. They belong mm. in a museum. <laughs> we have to just go through and take screenshots from all these streams to save these. And then make yeah, a yeah. calendar. <gasps> oh, that should be the calendar. <laughs> yeah. What a dumb <laughs> what, thing for someone to what, buy. What <laughs> Patreon tier is that going to be? Yeah, Please like... <laughs> make that a Patreon tier. <laughs> Here, do you want some crappy art hanging up on your wall every month? <laughs> I bet that there will be plenty of people who would want the the after show stream drawings as a calendar but that that was probably my favorite little indie reference slash trap in, in the whole thing i i loved the the path of god word of god the word of god is the name of that trap in last crusade do the impression one more time <laughs> molly can i is it okay oh go for it but in the latin alphabet jehovah star Oh dang it! I was, like, I was rushing over to mute you, but I didn't do it in time. <laughs> but now we'll never know what nice it starts try. with. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I, mean, I uh, since we're talking artifacts and indie moments, I guess I can share my drawing then, because uh, I love the idea of the artifact, much like you said, Molly, like the staff of Ra, the head being the thing that's the, the key to unlocking the puzzle. Uh, I really enjoyed the Omega moment of revelation for that. So, oh wow! Ooh, cool! I love that. I forgot Ken like actually draws. Yeah, it's like <laughs> well, you and Joseph Scrimshaw always show up, and we're like, oh my god! Well, I can add a squirrel tail to it if that... <laughs> <laughs> that's legit good. I okay, I'd put that on a calendar. Yeah. So yeah, that moment of uh, of her having that revelation moment was the the moment for me. Yeah. That really sold it. I love so, that. That's my moment in the show. Uh, I think I remember my my own reaction being very like, oh, cool, when she started doing that. Like they did really hit all those beats, uh, very very well. Also, the, that the thing whole better be sold in Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, and then I, they have to put like invisible ink up all over the park. I oh. was I was listening to ooh, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, I was listening to Four Center, Ken and Joseph on Four Center before this, and they pointed out that it reminded them of 
the kaleidoscope that she gets in the one of the previous episodes and like that might be why she decided to just give give it a try to look up inside it and i was like oh that's so sweet i love that it, even earlier on in the episode she is picking stuff up in the junkyard and just looking through it and yeah. just getting a new perspective yeah i hope that's her thing though she's always yeah, gonna look, look through, through everything <laughs> lightsaber hilt hmm. but <laughs> doesn't she represent a different perspective on the bad batch as well certainly mm -hmm. i'm done no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm trying to remember what other i, I think there was a, another indie moment in that scene where fee saves her or saves hunter and he says you're just making this up as you go she says that's part of the fun and then I think at the end, when they reach the heart of the mountain, uh, she is is pulling the heart out, and it keeps cutting back and forth between her and Omega. And Omega, she's not doing the the money thing like Satipo, but it had that same vibe of her anxiously watching the treasure be released. Mm. And it had a bait and switch with you know expecting an Elsa moment, grasping mm, for the yeah. Grail at the end, but and not speaking going of to the Grail. Place. Yeah, she. Oh yeah. The chalice that is teased yeah. at the end. Uh huh. And, and I guess uh, you know they they already did exactly that moment in episode two of Omega going for the treasure and Echo saying you have to let it go. So it's like we can't do the exact same Last Crusade moment again. It's worth so, all yeah. the delays of Bad Batch and considering all, everything else that was delayed. It seems like there's so much synergy wrapped up in Bad Batch right now with Fallen Order. Uh, being evocative of that, Indiana Jones mm -hmm. now finally mm -hmm. coming down the pike this year. Well, honestly, I think it's... I like uh, this connection, too. Andy points out that I didn't even think about this, the heart of the mountain being mm, mentioned. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. Well, I, I, honestly, I, I wonder if the delay was purposeful because, like, Bad Batch was supposed to come out originally, I think they were saying spring of last year, and then they delayed it to September and then to, to January. But after watching Andor, I'm like connecting a bunch of stuff back to Andor. It's, it's exploring similar themes, just in a different way. Although I guess if it had been coming out at the same time as Andor, we just would have been like, oh my God, they're doing the same thing. But <laughs> it's it's kind of fun that it came out after Andor and yeah, closer to Indy, closer to Fallen or, or Survivor. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious to see what the ultimate goal is with the season where it's moving mm. things to because that's the one thing i haven't gotten the sense quite of yet is what the end goal for the season is because technically yeah. if you're looking at uh, the way clone wars seasons were paced out we got to the halfway point of a season when season one ended of bad batch so this if this was a clone war season sure. would represent the second half of a season. So we would have gotten a mid season finale would have been the crosshair confrontation and the destruction of Camino. And then whatever is building to at the end of this season would be the season finale proper of a clone war season. So I'm wondering if structurally they're still building in that kind of way with this, that that's going to be the huge impactful defining moment of what happens with these characters in this show. And, if it's a finale finale, because have we heard anything about a season three? No, yeah. but I don't think we heard about season two until the end of season one. Yeah. But it did end on a, <laughs> it did end on a, a enough of a cliffhanger. But I, I think it was the like, the story wasn't finished. I think it was like a week before season one finished. They announced a season two. So I'm, I guess I'm expecting that they will do that again. If they're planning on more. It's also a show that I watch going, they're not just introducing us to the clones are one thing, but a child character that's just going to die. You can't oh, yeah. like that can't be the arc of Omega is mm -hmm. to, to do a family friendly show and go, and by the way, eh, she dies a couple years after this. That's why you don't see her in the future. Bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, ultimately I do think there's room for a third season for this, but I think ultimately this is just going to come, come down to what is, what does life look like for clones going forward? Where do they where do they go after this? Like they're slowly being phased out uh, for stormtroopers, and then 
for the Bad Batch, where do they like they have to struggle with what is my purpose now? I mean, they all have to struggle with that, but we're seeing that specifically in the members of the Bad Batch. And then yeah, does does Omega get to continue to explore the world if the rest of the Bad Batch wants to settle down at some point? Like, what does that look like going forward? But where do they go? Because there's a lot of clones out there. That was the whole point of the creation <laughs> right. of the clone army is to have yeah. a lot of them to fight this war. But we get to a point, even 10, 15 years down the road, that you can barely notice any of these clones around. They should be like, if they were repurposed into society, it should be like, well, here's a clone colony here. You no, know, here is, you know, here, here's, we got a, a whole bunch of clones live on this planet or, or you never hear. Is there an eventual like clone order 66? Is there an elimination of once it's a conscript army to actively go after the clones? Because they're, I mean, that's kind of like, I'm expecting tragedy at the end of this. Or I, I'm fearing it is that, you're right. We don't see clones m much beyond the Clone Wars. There, there are a handful here or there, but I think for the most part, uh, it's going to be a a, a trad. I'm I'm afraid it's a trad. And they're not going to be supported. It's not like there's oh, you right. know it's it's not like there's a pension plan for clones, <laughs> as we saw in Kenobi with the Five O First on that's, on the street there. That's a good I, I'm, point. I'm trying and to the <laughs> fact that like they I liked that they showed that in Kenobi so that we know like that is out that there's probably a lot of just homeless clones out there so that's telling us that yeah this probably isn't going to end well for some of them and this is I'm a galaxy trying to who's keep putting the war the way, behind them too uh, so the last thing they want you know this talking of of a lot of the parallels in star wars and uh i'm sure people can see the obvious without me mentioning it but the idea that sort of, oh, this thing is over, out of sight, out of mind. Let's not think about this entire clone army of people that, you know, but that are heavily hyped as, oh, they're just clones. They were created for fighting this war. I'm trying to keep in mind the way we all thought in Star Wars Rebels, like, well, this Ezra character's got to die. This Kanan character's got to die, which he did. Ahsoka has got to die. But they they can still find ways that we just can't see yet to to bring some happiness to it. But I am afraid it's gonna <laughs> I'm afraid it's gonna be sad. Mm. I mean, you can't see Rampart allowing any happiness. No, I mean, for, like a, for clones he already detests and him. not because yeah. of him. I mean, the Rampart thing we've seen about Imperial jockeying is if there's anything that's in the way of a plan that they want to execute. Mm -hmm they'll they'll remove those pieces from the board however they can yeah right. rampart sucks <laughs> like, like it's really good to have sucks. uncomplicated evil sometimes in a show where you <laughs> yeah. go yeah there's there's no there's, he doesn't like dogs he doesn't like cats yeah. he doesn't like anything there's yeah. nothing redemptive you know he's kicked a puppy at some point oh oh and then gone back and done it again <laughs> what's wrong with both of you <laughs> It's Rampart. It's not us. <laughs> Still your thoughts. Uh, real quick, I'll bring this up. Lance Peter Luke says, came here to say hi to Ken. That's hey. a cute Lego creation. Ah, that it is. is that is adorable. And His little uh, legs it, coming out of the bottom. Everyone's, uh, Lance Peter Luke is an amazing uh, Black Series customizer and, and builds these amazing 3D models uh, of sets that people can print out for their figures. Uh, 3D printing. So, uh, highly recommend checking out his channel. But hi, That's cool. And he was on Force <laughs> Five recently. So, if you want to oh, see nice. what his cool. oh, cool, I can check him out. Five favorite Star Wars figures. Are you can check that out. <laughs> well, uh, we almost got there, and I know people want us to talk about this. We, in fact, uh, I will scroll back up because someone brought it up, and I know that people want us to talk about the Zepho. So, I'll just say thank you to Star Orange for this super chat. Um, I was getting Zepho vibes this episode. I do want to see Hunter use his heightened abilities more. I found it odd that he couldn't sense that they were in a giant machine. I don't know that. I don't know how the sensing works, what his heightened senses mean. But I also he, don't think they were in the machine the whole time. He sensed that animal, kind of. Yeah. That was, I mean, that showed that. But 
but it wasn't an active yeah. machine. I mean, it was a machine that had been inactive for what seems like quite a long time. It's also, I, I think that the ruins and the booby traps were there to protect people, to stop people from getting into it. Because when they get to the, the final door, and Fia's like, sometimes a door is just a door. I think that was the entry point into the head of the thing. So I don't think they were walking through a machine that whole time. Mm. Do you think it was to stop people from getting into it or to stop people from stealing it? I mean, this was, That's... or that, it seems like a major weapon yeah. that this was but... like the access key to. Right, right. That, that was you something to know we were how. talking about today when we were recording our commentary was like, what, what are, what is this, all these booby traps for, for this giant machine? Is it to keep people out? Is it so that only a specific group of people know? But I'm gonna like, I'm gonna say that they were trying to keep people out. That it it was like a we're gonna bury this thing because the heart of the mountain shut it down. So I'm gonna, whoever had it last was like we're gonna shut this thing down. We we stopped it from destroying our planet. Kind of <laughs> <We'll>, <laughs> did, did we'll, they really though? <laughs> yeah yeah. And then we'll bury it so no one can find it we'll put all of these traps in the way so no one can get to it. I think it was mm -hmm. someone trying to set up a security system. Yeah. They thousands didn't, and thousands of years ago. They didn't expect a group like that to come through that loved puzzles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always beware smart. those who love puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I guess, and then I would assume that person then flew their ship off and then it wound up on Ord Mantell. And that's where the compass was. So I need to go back and look at that ship and see if yeah. it's something recognizable or if it was a thousand years old. Maybe the compass got traded around for a while. So, so Alex, hit us with some Zepho lore mm. as much as you get, because there's a lot of talk in chat about yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's why talk this about the Zepho. couldn't be the, the Zepho. <laughs> okay. So, and this is what tomorrow's video is all about. So you're you're getting a sneak preview. Uh, because I, I do love this theory. I don't think it's correct, but I love it as headcanon. I think I'm going to keep it as headcanon. But the Zepho were an ancient culture, which predated the Jedi. Fee talks about how this place was from before the Jedi. It connect, <clears throat> excuse me, it connects to the ancients, which <laughs> when she said that, I looked at like every little thing I could and even the subtitles I was like okay ancients wasn't with a capital A it was just a like a generic ancients so mm -hmm. I, I think she was just trying to say it's very old but then they activate this thing and it's got a long head and it shoots this blue beam out and the Zepho had long heads and they're uh, they, they made kind of automatic sentries called temple or tomb guards tomb guardians uh, in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and they walk around their machines. They shoot blue beams out of their chest. Like there are enough similarities there that make me go, "That's fun." Mm -hmm. I want it to be this FO. I do not think they wrote that into this episode, saying like, "And then this Zepho artifact comes out." It's not close enough, but. It is. <laughs> it's I think it's like enough. a little, like a little gift for yeah. fans that know this much about the Zepho. Like you said, it could. It's this is a gift to be like, yes, this is quite possibly what it is, but we're not going to tell you exactly what it is. And I think that's also part of the lesson of the episode, where it's by the end they're like, oh, well, at least the, we know the legend was true, and it's very <laughs> generic. But like that's. But the make point, the neck is, long to really mess with their heads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but the but the lesson is to just learn how to live in the moment and have a little fun and not be so grumpy uh and and not need necessarily an explanation for everything. Yeah, sometimes uh, solving a puzzle is not the best thing to do. Maybe you just need to let the puzzle be. And that that is I think the kind of the message of the episode. I do think there are things that will probably come back into play, but when Omega was just like that was fun, the legends are true and Fee is like you you said it. You have the right attitude about this like you know, just 
it was a fun treasure hunt and i felt myself conflicted at the end of it thinking what, what did that do for the whole season i don't know yet and i kind of wish i did but i did have fun watching this episode i mean when when the mech burst out of the mountain molly and i were both like wait what like <laughs> that's this thing we saw it in the trailer <laughs> and everyone started speculating what's that giant walking mech and that was the last thing i expected to see in this episode so are you the, the hunter the day, in this scenario yeah i think so <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't realize we were walking through a giant no, I was. Why is a, this important? Why is this? What is the lore here? What is? Going I was on? kind of the opposite though, because I was having a blast the whole time, and then the episode ended, and I was like, "That was okay." You're like, "How and, do I make a video out of this?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kinda. Uh, and I found ways, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was a bit of that where I just I I had fun watching it, and then at the end, I was like, "What was this all for?" Mm. And I, I get that. I get that uh, reaction. But sometimes it, it's okay to just have fun. Like, that's ultimately what Star Wars is meant to do. Is well, it's supposed to be about the story. Yeah, it's yeah. not about the yeah. lore. It's about were you entertained? Who's, right. to say that, who's to say that this doesn't end up being true with, with my theory that it was a mecha zillow beast and that eventually we know the zillow beast is coming and eventually maybe those two end up fighting i did want to bring this up yes is that the at the at Star i don't Wars think that will happen but it's my hold, like, hold on now weird <laughs> <laughs> at star wars celebration the the trailer that they played is not the one that they released and there was a flash of a creature in there that i was like that's the zillow beast it looked like a young Zillow beast, but I was I was like, they're finally gonna answer this question that we've had since season two of the Clone Wars. So, so, so you think the bats are gonna have to go back and get this Mecha Zillow beast to fight like, the Zillow beast? Like we, we oh, we know where there's it. a big creature. <laughs> I mean, that would now we got to get it working again. So it's a whole montage of them to you know tightening screws and and lifting <laughs> things and fixing things. <laughs> Yeah. It it does have a very, you know, Mecha Godzilla kind of feel. Just this big mechanic kaiju. And if there is another kaiju, I, I don't think they need it to fight a baby Zillow beast. But <laughs> if it's a baby cloned Zillow beast, they probably don't Maybe need it. Maybe they put it together the to raise the baby Zillow beast. Maybe it's Aww. not fighting. That'd be a fun twist. Oh, that would be cute. <laughs> Like a, like you have droids that care for folks. This will be the droid that the cares for the Zillow beast. That's all that giant mecha needed was something to care for. It was yeah. just lonely and it was lashing out. Oh. And maybe <laughs> Fee uploads her droids, <laughs> her droids back up to this giant mechanical beast. Hmm. Well, I do want to pose the question. Who do we think wins? The uh, a, a fully grown Zillow beast versus this mecha thing in like puzzle solving or <laughs> in, in a fight? Ken. In a you know what I game. mean. <laughs> <laughs> Let them fight. Yes. Will he catch me if I fall? <laughs> <laughs> Slap him in the middle of Coruscant. What happens? Who wins? Uh, I um, think Zillow beast. I think Zillow beast. I, I do too. I mean, that's just a war of attrition at a certain point, right? You just more pieces you take off the mechanical one. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, let, MC Lego Boy says it perfectly. How do you? It's impenetrable, impenetrable except for the gas. So unless the, the we don't mecha, know what the emissions are like on this mecha. <laughs> that's true, yeah, <laughs> it's just so polluting the air at a terrible rate. It's got really bad gas. <laughs> but we don't know how I, much I worse the emissions are under the empire on coruscant i mean who knows it could be this pollution mm. across the board all kinds of regulations being lifted by the empire mm -hmm. you know i point. i do think that 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 might be part of the uh the reaction to some of these episodes where it's like we do know that some of these things are coming and we're just anxious to get there <laughs> 
but we're still early on in the season. So we're, we just got to be patient, but I think yeah. that's part of, part of my own reaction to it of like, I know that Zillow beast is out there. Mm. Where Where is is it? <laughs> binge watch. Yeah. And everyone will see uh, uh Gungi riding a, a giant mechanical Zillow beast <laughs> to go care for a baby Zillow beast. It's, it's I feel like the the filler reaction, and I'm talking myself through my own emotions still. I, I feel like that's only an in the moment thing of the week to week. Like, oh, but I I, I really want to get to this. And so if I you've never seen exists. that trailer, you would not be having that response to this. Kind of, kind of. But even when you finish a series, I mean, like, Battlestar Galactica is one of my favorite series of all time and there is a string of like four episodes in season two that i cannot stand but it like when i look back at battlestar i all i have are good emotions i'm just like man what a great series and then you know i might skip those episodes and it's fine but but do at you the end of the day if you do a rewatch do fan. you skip those episodes no i watch them total fake fan without a doubt <laughs> <laughs> Molly <Coleman. laughs> wait what did you say no, I Molly, said uh, you, Molly you said. would skip those. I've watched Scar pretty much every time. I okay, I think I have skipped Black Market. Black Market is dumb. It it <laughs> I, adds I, nothing. Yeah, I don't want I don't need to watch that episode. Molly, I, I can understand Molly, you skip because you have time for this. It is <laughs> if it's not worth watching, why rewatch it? If if you've already determined that you don't enjoy it, what do you do? Like, the best parts hit emotionally regardless of whether or not leah dama investigates the black market it just you gotta does you gotta love me. it for all of its good parts and its bad parts I, well i i don't love the scar episode but i usually watch that one yeah so but that's got our best friend katie sackoff in it she's like one of the obvious like every episode does but <laughs> <laughs> that, that she is central to that story yes uh, but how but my, much my, my, my point okay. is yeah, how much of approaching any viewing experience now is because of how hyper focused you have to be about lore and where the, what's the place and what is being introduced and how does this connect and does that alter your ability to just comfortably sit back and relax and view something as a, this was fun? Not really. I mean, like I, I still think the episode was fun. Uh, and even talking through it now, I'm like, I, I'm already appreciating it more. Um, but I, I think that there is just that aspect of knowing what's out there and just being anxious to get to it. I, I think that's part of it. It's just kind of like this, the the state of media consumption now is that when, when did trailers for TV shows become a thing? I don't even remember that. Like, it just feels so normal now. But when we were waiting a week or two ago for the Mandalorian season three trailer, I was like, man, did, did lost have trailers? I don't remember. They had commercials, but did like a trailer drop. And but when was but that? Like the a streaming visuals used to be is that episodes would basically finish being produced maybe a week or two out from air date, mm -hmm. even at hour longs. So you might have enough time for a quick little trailer to be cut like in this week's episode of blah, blah, blah. It's this. You didn't have an entire season done and sitting on a shelf for a year and a half before it finally right. showed up to where you could have 17 different trailers and teases come out over the course of that before it ever drops. And people are looking at well, where does that fit in? What does this do? You didn't have time to mull over. You would see you would watch this week's episode, maybe get a next week on the A team at the end yeah <laughs> and then the next week you were there and you were watching what was next week on the a-team you didn't have time to mull over and parse all of these things like you do today so i think that you know maybe there's this new generic title uh, uh trailers that's just bad batch 2 coming soon yeah and here's the and, this, and like a heroic pose of them or them like a little comedy sketch just totally mm -hmm. unrelated it's omega's birthday party you know <laughs> 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 little five minutes uh, short and that's your teaser for the next season like i totally repainted all your uniforms teak <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, that that seems like the the sitcom filler episode that i wish we got 
of just oh. them on the Havoc Marauder. Like, since you brought oh, up Omega, you got into the paint again. Yeah, give oh, me, give no. me like a short suit, like Bad Batches. It's just a yeah. bunch of different shorts yeah, yeah. of like little moments of them around the Marauder, and yeah. And let that fill up, in between seasons. You brought up Battlestar. It reminded me that there's, there was a, uh, the the internet only the webisodes for yeah. Battlestar. Uh -huh. I forget what they were called, but like there were a couple. Give us that for more shows. Like, give me a little bunch yeah. of webisodes for Bad Batch that aren't little Lego shorts. Like <laughs> yeah. web like. 10 minute webisodes maybe I, just a minute I, I just agree. a minute in and out little comedy beats of you know, i the, agree that the, the bad batch the two of them playing hollow a birthday chess. party would be fantastic yes. i i think that should be yeah. an episode at some point because that'd just be cute but they they did do that for star wars rebels they did do a few shorts to lead us into the series oh. so th they could do something let's go like back that again. to that yeah. yeah, let's go back to no, no, no teaser footage for the seasons and no parsing, no anticipation other than we get to spend time with these characters. Yeah. And let that if it's going to be another year and a half till Bad Batch season three, just give us a couple of one minute shorts. Just little day in the life of whatever they're doing. You know, tech being frustrated, trying to uh, rebuild some something and, you know, having a, a conversation. Who knows? great echo making a, a call to rex and checking in <laughs> yeah i would love that it's it i i've i've compared the bad batch to x files a couple times now uh because of the smoking man and being like oh if the smoking man's in an x files episode you know it's going to be good and i've called crosshair the smoking man of this series but x files is something that i a, another amazing series that I feel like people would be so frustrated with today with all of its monster of the week episodes. They'd be like, Oh, this is filler. This is filler. Yeah. What about the aliens? We're just the conspiracy. Yeah. We saw a smoking man in the trailer. So we know there's going to be a lore episode. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but some of the, or not some of all, most of the monster of the week episodes are so good. Like they're so creepy. Oh, and do fun. you know how angry people would be with the lone gunman episodes today? Oh you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is this funny thing? We have a serious conspiracy. We have, why are we having fun? <laughs> it's not a comedy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm curious to see where the show goes, and I'm wondering if we see time jumps in the future. I'd love to jump a couple of heads, uh, a couple of years ahead in each season, and sort of get that journey. Uh, yeah, because I don't think we're going to see them in live action. So, no, so, you know, it, unless it's going to be a CGI tour de force with Tamara Morrison when it comes to where they stay helmeted the whole time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we can't get these helmets off. What are we going to do? Uh, what is going to go on with the mission? <laughs> that would be a fun little cameo if they could figure it out. But yeah, I, I don't think we're ever going to get these guys in live action. Yeah, we might we might cut in like a major uh, fleet scene of like a cross cutting to a cockpit of them all sitting in it mm -hmm. as a cameo. No, I think uh, of any of them, I think Omega is the one we have the best chance sure. of seeing transition. And who knows? We again, we don't know what happens to the batch in the interim. Of any ones that do seem like something could happen to them in sort of like a character forming tragedy kind of way. It's sort of like I me, mean, the batch sacrificing themselves for Omega. I yeah, don't think they're all going to die. That's always the case, though, and I don't want that to happen. I, I don't see think it they're with all. I don't. I don't either. Yeah, I, I could see it with Crosshair because we've talked a lot about like, will he be redeemed? Will he not be redeemed? Personally, I kind of feel like he shouldn't, but I'm. That's just the chaotic version of me wanting to see where that goes. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know the the whole like dying for for someone else and then they're just gone. Like we've seen it enough. Well, maybe they, I, they I thought they died. Like, oh, no, out. we survived. It's OK. We're, <laughs> we're good. I don't think they're all going to get out, but I don't think they're going to all die either. Yeah. I think it'll be kind of like a star. Echo has seen thing. enough. Just let Echo retire. Uh, I know, he's been through Echo. so much. He was just drinking at that bar at the beginning of this episode, and I was like, "I've been there, man." That's uh, 
I was also listening to the Force Center before this, and they were talking about how last week they were on that Nerf Nuggets mission, and we don't know what happened to them. Like they <laughs> something dark may have happened while they were delivering Nerf Nuggets. They, they went through it. Oh yeah, because <laughs> when in our reaction or not our reaction, yeah, yeah, it was re with the reaction this morning. I was editing it, and I go, "Ooh, Hunter looks tired." Like Hunter just looks over it before they even go on this mission. So whatever that Nerf Nuggets thing was, it wore him out. <laughs> to be fair, that is sta Hunter's standard look in most episodes. Yeah. yeah, just tired and grumpy. If he's a if he's a parent now or a, taking care of a small child, then yeah, he's aged himself up quite a bit. Come on, what's the Star Wars equivalent of an amusement park? Can we have an episode or a short where they go to an mm. amusement park and take Omega to an amusement park? That'd That's kind of what the I want to see them. City... I want tech navigating the app, trying to figure out photo pass. So... <laughs> oh yeah, tech is app daddy. Like, <laughs> okay, everyone, we have to go across I think the this park now. The fast pass. Yeah. That's kind of <laughs> what Ord Mantell was when they first got there, though. Like for for Omega, at least that probably felt like well, at least an the snack park. portion of it for her. Yeah. The <laughs> Honestly, Mantell like makes... they have to do the bare minimum to entertain her. In episode two of the series, she was like what is dirt like she loves oh, yeah she's it, like so. i'm gonna go look through garbage with wreck yeah <laughs> yeah it's really not that hard just take her to a new planet every i'm gonna so stare often. at a wall <laughs> yep that's why you wait as long as possible to show your kids tv and movies because then you're just like look at this rock and they're like <gasps> oh no omega's totally the kid who's like i got a box it's like, do you see what was in the box? This box is cool. <laughs> Thank you for the box. <laughs> Thanks for the box. I love it. It's my favorite box ever. I'm putting it in my box of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> putting my box in a box. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, no, I, I, so I'm curious where it goes. We didn't talk about a pivotal uh, character in this episode, and that's Mel. Mm. I totally To bring forgot. up my own drawing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Mel the droid. Mel Mel is uh, Fee's droid. I don't know what yes. kind of droid he she he she is. I they... think she is a new droid. <laughs> the little mushroom cloud. So it's <laughs> it's it's like a, a a barrel version of a gonk droid, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So Mel running from the the explosions and the fire, which looked like hilarious. live action. It did. It was hilarious. And that then... was the best animation in the show. Was the little when, the little run animation? Oh, you like you felt Mel's terror. You were yeah, you were. We were all scared for Mel, and then we were like, surely they wouldn't explode this adorable droid, and then they did. But then they brought it back at the end of the episode when Fee was like, "Don't worry, this happens all the time. That's... She can re be rebuilt." <laughs> I was like, "Oof." <laughs> Uh, you know what it made me think of? Also fitting that Ken is here, but it made me think of the Venture Brothers. I was like, how often do you think this happens? That she... <laughs> Which like, Mel oh. are we on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they mm. died again. Well. <laughs> so Mel thinks they're still on their first mission together? Oh. <laughs> like That's where the, that's where the backup exists. Yeah, from. it dies every time. And it's like, oh, thank you for buying me. <laughs> or or yes. she's she remembers. And the whole time she's running, she's like, not again. Not again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember every death. It hurts so much. <laughs> yeah. Are these backups wireless? How do these backups occur? <laughs> oh. But yeah, I was like, they're not going to kill Mel. And then that beam just goes zoop. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. They did so it. you need a Mel action figure? Or would you put a, a Mel pop behind you? Oh yeah. I like that. Oh yeah. Mel's it's, a cutie. Like I, I have the B2 emo pop on my desk specifically all the time so any tiny cute droids also I, challenge I to land much. speed or luke 3d we need a 3d model find a way of mel because that yeah seems like it'd be a pretty straightforward model to do it's not a terribly complicated it's droid like it's a, basically a barrel with some paint apps yeah it's like a gonk droid but barrel shaped so so the gauntlet's thrown down for it can be done we need to print one out to sit behind you on the shelf. Yeah. Uh, also, for anyone watching uh, who uh, also played Zelda Breath of the Wild, got very uh, Divine Beast oh, yeah, feelings yeah. from that monster as well. Mm -hmm. Also, that, uh, what machine. is 
Horizon something. Zero Dawn, yeah. People talking about the long necks. Yeah. Those looked like almost exactly the same, which was cool. Also, I tweeted about this earlier. Uh, I got a lot of Fifth Element vibes in this episode <laughs> because the little, the heart of the mountain looked a lot like the little elemental stone. And when they ignited it, it like sh shot that beam up. And that happens when uh, they put all the stones together and Lilu is like in the middle. I don't know. I, I love Fifth Element so much. So it gave me a lot of that kind of vibe. Yeah, I guess they had like, like the same sort of wave patterns on the heart of the mountain, right? Mm -hmm. This is on the stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just stones igniting a, like a massive weapon because that's and, kind and of the, what the she beam was coming out. Be. Yeah. Good times. Love so it. So we have to see this machine again, is what you're saying. We have to. Maybe that planet is riddled with them. They're just everywhere. Maybe, Cause... maybe we think that Mel got destroyed. They leave the remains of that Mel behind, but that Mel <laughs> survives and rebuilds. <laughs> And makes a friend. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of that Mel, machine, Mel becomes the giant beast, and then, but then it's a then that's the beast that takes care of the the Zilla, be, Zilla yeah. beast. Yeah, that all makes sense. We're tying it all together. <laughs> <laughs> see, Come see how the... deep this episode is, Alex. You can't dismiss it. <laughs> Ties well, into uh, everything. I mean, I I I feel better talking through it, like. I liked the episode well enough, but I, I think I appreciate it even more now after talking through it and just having fun talking about it. Cause that's, I mean, that's the best part about star Wars is talking about it and just making jokes and, and, and finding new ways, a new perspective to look at it. Like Omega looking through <gasps> oh, her little compass. Like that? You did it. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Uh, the galaxy's edge. <laughs> I hope, honestly, that'd be great. <laughs> well, we we're gonna let you go, Ken, and we're gonna stick around and answer some chat questions. But yeah, you only have do, what three hours left to go. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> but before we let you go, let everyone know where they can find you and follow you, and what have you got going on right now? Uh, so at Ken Plume uh, on the social medias that still exist in this moment, uh, Insta Ken Plume on Instagram. Uh, I'm trying to build up. Uh, audience on the uh, the YouTube channel for Force 5 because I have a lot of wonderful guests coming up so that's uh, just Ken Plume is the URL for the YouTube channel and both uh, both of you have been on the show uh, Bobby Moynihan, Kristen Baver uh, Paul Sun Young Lee I'm doing another thing with Paul coming up soon where we're going to be talking some prop replicas uh, mm -hmm. so if people haven't checked it out, I would love they do that because uh, I'm really enjoying having the conversations with folks that turn into a much deeper conversation than just their five figures. Um, and also the Art of DuckTales is still available. So I hope people, if they haven't picked it up yet, it's so heavy. Pick up <laughs> oh, their cute. copy. That's the deluxe edition. Ooh. Or they can just get the standard edition, which looks like oh my that. Goodness. But doesn't have the gilded edges that the deluxe edition does. Which also comes with a whole bonus of all kinds of hundreds of hours of interviews that I did. So <laughs> David Tennant, so cool. who hopefully maybe we'll see or hear David Tennant in the future. Star Wars connection that. there. Yeah. And yeah. also Scrooge, all about finding treasure. <laughs> so That's see? Well done. Oh, connected. I did it. <laughs> Stuck Synergy. the landing. <laughs> uh, this has been a pleasure. Thank you both for having me on uh, and uh, hope to do it again soon. <laughs> I was just thank you, thank you, thank you. A couple people saying goodbye and they loved your well, thoughts. And thank you, Ken. I'll, I'll send the drawing. You all can put it in the gallery of past guests and that way you'll have it for the calendar. The calendar, yes. <laughs> Gotta make that. So, right. uh, <laughs> bye. Have a great night, Ken. Bye, Ken. And now we are going to take a real quick one minute break because uh, tonight's stream is sponsored. So I'm going to play that and we will be right back. 
Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I've struggled with stress and anxiety for years. I started going to therapy back in 2012 and have been going off and on ever since. Talking to a therapist has been a huge help for my mental health as well as my professional and personal life, but there's no denying therapy can be expensive and time consuming. That's where BetterHelp is different. Their services are more affordable than in-person therapy and you can visit a therapist from the comfort and privacy of your home. When you sign up, you just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you get matched with a licensed therapist chosen to meet those needs in as little as 48 hours. BetterHelp offers a broad range of expertise with over 20,000 therapists that can give you access to help that may not be available in your area. Schedule secure video and phone sessions and exchange unlimited messages. If you're not happy with your therapist, you can request a new one at no additional charge. Join 3 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com SWE and get on your way to being your best self. That's betterhelp.com slash swe and we're back i love that that I, first of all i just love that ad and i love better help and what they offer but i love that it's like talking about stress and anxiety and depression who doesn't have those things in this day and age i don't know <laughs> I think everyone's got one, which is uh, sad, but that just that just comes when living with living in that just comes this, from existing, I think this world. But <laughs> but yeah, thanks, everyone for sticking around through the ad. Let's get into some super chats. Let me scroll all the way up. I will go ahead and read our first one here from Donnie Rand. Thank you, Donnie. I'm so glad Fee had Mel's memory backed up. Oh, we, good. We are kind of tying it back to what we were just talking about. Seems like more organics should look out for their droids by having them backed up. I agree. Right? It seems like something that's simple enough to do, but even people who care about droids, like, might not do it. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's so frustrating in Star Wars to see some people care so much about their droids and then some people treat them like trash. Yeah. And it's well, like I mean, that's just droids one of... get certain treatment i don't know well that's one of the star wars kind of like signal posts to just see how an organic being treats a droid because terrible people always treat droids poorly and good people always treat them well but if you look at luke even in a new hope at the at the beginning when he's meeting r2 and 3po he's kind of like rolling his eyes and sarcastically saying hello to R2. I, I love that moment. 3PO says, yeah, like, hi. I'm C3PO and this is my counterbot, R2D2. And he's like, Hello, like <laughs> you're, you're just you're just a droid. Yeah. Uh, and then but by the end of the film, he is like, do not replace my droid. Like, I've been through a lot with him, and he is staying with me forever. Like that that mm -hmm. is a little mini arc for Luke. Yeah. And also so I, I, I feel agree. Like yeah, I, well, actually, I, because of the way you say that, it's like, yeah, that's another signal that Fee is a good person. Oh, yeah, because she backs up the droid. Yeah. I I uh, I know a lot of people feel like Obi-Wan doesn't quite care for droids mm -hmm. because he doesn't remember R2 in A New Hope. Which that's definitely... Well, but... well, I mean, he straight up says... <laughs> it it, it kind of tracks because in uh, R2 lost in the Clone Wars, when R2-D2 gets lost in a space battle, uh, that that's what Obi-Wan says is that droids are a dime a dozen. And Anakin's like, excuse you, what? So, yeah, that I, I don't think Obi-Wan really ever uh, got on that level with droids. Yeah, <laughs> he was always like flying's for droids. Uh, uh, Garth McMurray has the next super chat. Thank you, Garth. If they do get something like the heart of the mountain in the future in future episodes, and they sold it, could the artifact find its way into Luthen Rail's shop? <laughs> sure, why not? That would be an interesting little thing for Andor season two to throw in. Is like, oh, let's just remake that, and then all the nerds will be like, oh, that means there's <gasps> another one of those mechs out there somewhere. <laughs> 
because yeah. the the one we saw today melted. And I, you know, I assume there is another one of those out there somewhere. And like, we don't know for sure that everything in Luthen's shop is legit. Some of that <laughs> stuff might he might just be selling really good replicas just to really stick it to the the uppity schmucks that come and shop there. That's I, true. I like that. I like that theory. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind that. <laughs> He's like, I can sell anything as my Luthen Rail persona. I I hope it's all real for some reason, but you know, why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not just scam them all? I, but I, I do want to point out that the idea that this mecha existing is just a fun star wars thing uh to bring up force center again they always talk about tip of the iceberg storytelling where the clone wars was kind of the first example of that they they dropped this this name the clone wars and it's intriguing and you're like what is that and as star wars has grown we have spent a lot of time within the republic or the empire or all this familiar space but sometimes we get to go out to this system that tech has never heard of and we we find this crazy machine and it's just a reminder that star wars is massive and that there there's so much more weird stuff that we can find in future stories and i do like that yeah Sorry, I just uh, read a chat that you'll read in a second and probably be upset about, but... <laughs> yeah, I see it. <laughs> uh, I, I did put the message in the, the doc for this next one, if you want to read it. Oh, uh, Queersland, Queersland Australia. Australia. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, Queersland Australia, for this next super chat. Uh, do we want to see this culture again in Afra, maybe? Oh, sure, I mean, that... Mm. Afra is the place, honestly. That is the place to do it, yeah. Because Afra, uh, uh, Alyssa Wong and Kieran Gillen, they have taken the most obscure, weird stuff and followed up on it in the comic. Like, uh, we were talking yesterday in my Fallen Order stream. We, we were just talking about background character armor designs and who has the coolest armor. And someone brought up Tam Posla who is a great example, who is so far in the background in Rogue One, but has awesome armor. And Dr. Afra, those comics brought him back and did a ton with his character. A ton of weird stuff, but like in the best way. So Afra does feel like the place to just mine, like, okay, what, what have the shows and movies done recently, but they're not going to explore that again. Oh, they just introduced a giant, like, mechanized weapon? Let's send Afra there. That seems mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. I think Afra would really get along with Fee, too. I mean, Afra would probably get along with a lot of pirates. But, like... It would be an interesting relationship, because Afra, like we said earlier, is not the kind of person to put the heart of the mountain back. She would not shut the machine down mm. she would run out of there <laughs> she'd be like good luck anyone who's left on this planet yep bye she is uh, like people including me have talked about how she's space indiana jones honestly she's not she is space belloc she is out for fortune and glory above mm. all else like yeah. she's in it for her That's what I say. That's what that's what you say. <laughs> uh, this next one, I don't know that I understand. Uh, from from Darth Shibby, thank you <laughs> for the super chat. Smoke, Shibby. Well, the emojis to me look like fart, fart, face, squiggly line. Fog. Oh, maybe maybe this is representing that's fog. <laughs> that's that's what the Weather Channel uses for fog. That's fog. <laughs> The squiggly lines. Oh, I thought they were doing like a a thing from the episode. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I am terrible at understanding emoji speak. I don't know. I'm so. just guessing too. We're both trying to decipher what oh, this means. Oh, puff, puff, pass, maybe. Oh. That's what Garth says. That makes more sense. 
Why doesn't the emoji have a mouth? Because <laughs> it's holding it in. Oh. <laughs> I, I like know. that mug, too. <laughs> <laughs> that <is laughs> you, didn't, a... you didn't read the mug, did you? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get demonetized. No, kidding. <laughs> uh, Daniel Chick has the next super chat. Thank you, Daniel. I was slightly annoyed that they didn't name the ancients when there are many ancient species. I think it looks quite Zepho, but I may be biased. Yeah, to go back to the whole Zepho talk, that's kind of my biggest argument against it being the Zepho, is that if they wanted it to be, they could have said so. Oh, yeah. Fee definitely knows the history of the Zepho. I yeah, feel, why I feel not? Like she knows a lot, and I think she would know. But like I said earlier, I think the point of it this episode is to to not go in specifics and like we don't need to know the exact lore behind this to make it work for its purpose in in this story in this episode and and in the lessons that fee is teaching omega it's kind of the mo of star wars anyway of they they will vaguely drop breadcrumbs that can be picked up by a comic like Dr. Afra down the line. Or I remember in uh, Chuck Wendig's Aftermath Empire's End, there were a bunch of like stormtrooper recruits, basically, that were being taken from Jakku. And one of them was described as tall and blonde. And everyone was like, oh, is that Phasma? And then oh, we get yeah. to the Phasma novel. And no, that was not Phasma. But I, I think it I think it was at a Dragon Con. Uh Chuck Wendig said like he was laying that out as an option. He did not specifically say this is Phasma's origin story, but that was a possibility. And mm -hmm. so I, I think them saying fee going, oh, this dates back to the ancients. I think that's just a potential breadcrumb for some other content creator to pick up down the line. But for this story, it didn't matter, except to us who wanted them to say the word Zeppo. Sure. Didn't they call, I'm trying to remember, it, it made me think of in Cabin in the Woods at the end, didn't they call them the Ancient Ones or the Ancients? Yeah, that sounds right. Ancient Ones sounds right. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen that, but. But that would be an example of capital A. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was my thing. <laughs> like I immediately turned subtitles on. I was like, uh, lowercase a ancients. So she just means old things generally, not like yeah. uh that there is something called the ancients, which I I looked up today. I did not know this off the top of my head, but the Klatuinians uh worshipped something called the ancients. So that there are examples out there, but yeah, it would have been fun to have a connection, but I think they mm -hmm. were just leaving it open-ended for other storytellers. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring up this next one, but I have to take a potty break, so I will okay. BRB. Next one Ice. is from Ice. Thank you, Ice, for the next Super Chat. I really enjoyed this one. I love seeking out treasures and exploring ancient places and stories, so this was a really good and fun adventure. I'm with you. I... I uh, like I've been talking this whole uh, stream, I had a blast watching it. And still at the end, I was just kind of grumpy and acting like, oh, but what does it mean for the season as a whole? When really, I, I just had a good time for 25 minutes or however long. Like I was entertained. I enjoyed all of the Indiana Jones style adventure in Star Wars. Uh, but you know, like that, that, that wasn't enough for me. Uh, I wanted to know what, what does this mean in the larger picture? And it doesn't have to mean anything. And I can accept that. I, I still like, I'm trying to decide, you know, when I rewatch season two, will this be an episode I'm excited to watch? Maybe it'll probably grow on me, but, uh, I, it, it's, it's like this weird push and pull of being a fan of having your expectations and, and then being upset when they're not met, even though you had a perfectly good time watching the episode. It's very weird. 
Uh, and Ice has the next super chat as well. I'll pull that up. Thank you, Ice. I loved the indie vibes as they explored the tunnels. I had the same feeling of excitement I felt with the Jedi Temple on Lothal or even the tombs in Jedi Fallen Order. So this episode really nailed it there. Totally agree with you there too. Like the solving of the puzzles and the music swelling. It, it absolutely felt like exploring the temples on, uh, I think you meant, oh, oh, the Jedi Temple on Lothal and Rebels, right. Uh, and then the temples and the tombs on Zepho and Fallen Order. Yeah, I, I love solving those stupid little ball puzzles. Even still, yesterday, I was on the Zepho tomb and I like had to remember how to solve that that Paul puzzle to, to get back out of the tomb. But Oh, hey, Hilo. Hilo just wandered in. You're muted, Molly. I can't hear you. Nope. Can everyone else hear Molly? <laughs> well, Molly will figure out her did you mute your microphone? Okay. I'll have to delete this part of the podcast, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed all of the temple rating, so to speak, and all the puzzle solving. So I am with you there, Ice. <laughs> uh, Maddie Gunner has the next super chat. Thank you, Maddie. Just says. Ooh, it How is a secret entrance. Yep. Okay. At my, I just had to unplug and replug my microphone in. <laughs> I love that. Ooh, it is a secret entrance. It was kind of <laughs> like Omega was copying Fee on a lot of stuff, and then Wrecker was copying Omega. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the things that we brought up already, but watching the enthusiasm chain out through the whole batch from... Fee to Omega to record attack to kind of echo. And eventually Hunter just seemed okay with it. Yeah. But uh, Gio Flores has the next super chat. Thank you, Gio. Hey guys, love this episode. Also side note, Rampart definitely seems like he would hit Grogu. Molly, your thoughts? Look, I hate him enough as it is. If I saw him hit Grogu, I would throw hands <laughs> for sure. Like, there would be no chance of survival. At who? Like, what would happen on our couch oh. if that happened? Well, would you just start throwing hands at me? I guess that's if, if I were in the Star Wars universe. If okay. I had to see Good that to on my TV, I would be devastated, and I wouldn't know what to do with myself for the rest of the day. Molly was pretty distraught, honestly, in Episode 8 of The Mandalorian when... The, the scout trooper was punching Grogu. I was uh, mad. Yeah, Molly was not happy. Because that's basically punching a puppy on my TV screen. It's just that the puppy is in a bag and you can't see it. Mm -mm. Not cool. I'm glad you didn't get mad at me because I was kind of laughing. <laughs> I would just, I, I think I was probably filled with so much emotion that I didn't know what to do with in the, in that moment. <laughs> I was more laughing at the stormtroopers themselves and their dialogue, not at the yes. fact that Grogu was being hit. I should make that clear. Yeah. 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 No, we, I think we were in shock that that <laughs> could even happen now. Oh, imagine now what Grogu would do to that guy with his little force mm. powers. Yeah. No chance. Now that he's been, training yeah uh pld projects thanks for the super chat <laughs> quote what took you so long great callback line to a new hope love the fun adventure of this episode that i didn't even know, recognize that one i mean like that that definitely is a line from a new hope but i i did not make the the connection <laughs> yeah what took you so long this episode just full of callbacks 
This must have been so much fun for them to make. And like the the Kiner, uh, whoever runs the Kevin Kiner Twitter, I don't know if it's him or if it's one of his many brothers. Uh, <laughs> they they like love to give little hints, and I think they're having a ton of fun over there. What hints did they give for this episode? I didn't see that. So they posted a little gif of the guy that goes aliens. Oh, okay. I think I don't hinting, know what that hint would be. Hinting that the ancients in this case were like oh, aliens ancient aliens that came to Earth and planted this giant scary thing. And it's but that, like, the guy that guy is on the show Ancient Aliens, so that makes sense. Oh yeah, then yeah, that's what it was. Nice. <laughs> uh bakey thank you for the next super chat have blasters ever been effective against monsters in star wars um sometimes i mean they are if the script needs them to be yeah basically honestly the the monster in this episode i thought was a cool design kind of just there like just there to be an annoyance and it separated the Bad Batch, I guess. It made that cave-in happen. But then the separation didn't really go anywhere. Like, I feel like they could have all just been together the whole time. And then it just shows up at the end to be annoying and make Fee drop the, the brick. Mm. I do like seeing Omega every time she pulls out her electro bow whatever that thing's called she's she's like really good with that thing now uh daniel chick has the next super chat thanks daniel my head cannon is their zepho it looked like zepho <laughs> there well then that's perfect that's my head cannon too i don't think it's true i don't think it's canon but i like it i like the idea of it so i'm gonna keep it until Star Wars says otherwise. Yeah. Also, uh, I saw people are pointing out that the the creature reminded them of a Rogwart, and I had to remind myself of what that was. Uh, but it's from the Lair of Grievous episode of the Clone Wars, and it does look an awful lot like a Rogwart. So oh, fine. maybe. <laughs> Uh, Francisco 501st, thanks for the next super chat. I like the new graphics for this episode slash show, specifically when the big creature was blasting his super laser. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that that's what Ken said. He he thought that that part looked almost realistic, like that looked like the best kind of animation in the whole episode. That's I, I, I think I take it for granted now, but the show just always looks great. It always looks good. Every new planet looks cool and interesting. It's something that I, I don't mention anymore because I'm just like, yeah, it's the Bad Batch. It looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows it. Comes with the territory at this point. The more episodes, the more seasons they make of this show or shows like it, the better it's going to look. I mean, that's true of like Star Wars Rebels as well. It, it kind of upgraded every season. It, it looked a little better and a little better. And the Clone Wars. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, Garth McMurray has the next super chat. And the question is for Molly. And she muted herself again. So... <laughs> Garth McMurray, thank you for the next super chat. So would Molly punch Jason Sudeikis and Adam Pally? Uh, I'll answer for her. I think it's a yes to both. I don't remember which one actually punched Grogu. I think Molly might give Jason Sudeikis a pass because he is Ted Lasso. But Adam Pally, uh, we do like Adam Pally in the show Happy Endings. So... I don't know. If she had to choose one to punch, I think she would punch Adam Pally. Am I back? Yep. Okay. 
the power cable in one of my monitors was just like barely hanging in there. Y'all, it's been a struggle. I switched to a standing desk and like there's cables everywhere. Anyways, who would I punch? I, I'm guessing that if you had to choose just one, you would punch Adam Pally. But I also said first that you would punch them both. Mm, I was just trying yeah. to tread water while you <laughs> figured <laughs> yeah. your stuff out. I, I would punch Adam Pally. I can't punch Ted Lasso. Nailed it. I can't do it. <laughs> That's what I said. But is Adam pa Adam Pally was the one that was doing the hitting, right? I don't remember. Uh, well, I would if it was if it was Jason Sudeikis doing the hitting, I would give him a stern talking to, and if it was Adam Pally, I would punch him. Yeah, you, you just ask Jason, is that something Ted Lasso would do? Yeah, really, Jason. Mm. Uh, Ice has the next super chat. Thanks, Ice. I feel like the purpose of this one, beyond just being a fun time, was to begin exploring Fee, our newest reoccurring character, which is good. Yes. Yeah, I, I liked that this episode brought her closer to the Bad Batch, closer to Omega, showed that she's a good person who means well, doesn't want to just use them like Sid does. And yeah, I hope she does come back. Yeah, I, I assume that she had that little intro scene in the first episode. She's here now. And I agree, this is the full-on introduction for Fee. We uh, touched on that earlier. So I, I think we're getting to know her a little bit so that she will continue coming back, as, as Molly put it, as Omega's crazy aunt. <laughs> cool aunt. Not necessarily crazy. Crazy fun aunt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like this one, Ryan. Uh, the batch is zero for two. Lol, no way they go on another treasure hunt, right? <laughs> I, I they need to get some treasure at some point. I think yeah. at this point it's it's become a thing. They need to go on a treasure hunt and actually get a reward that isn't like the reward is the friends that we made along the way. Right, right. Like they need some some jewels or some some gold or something they can trade for something cool. They need the shiny stuff. Yeah. Uh, I saw another Zebulon Foof uh, asked if they missed the possibility of the Walker being a Zephonian construction. Possible fun head cannon. I doubt it was the intent of the creators. Yeah. Uh, Ice has another super chat. She's got, kind of got a Hondo Onaka vibe. Oh, yeah, for sure. You don't trust her as far as you can throw her, but she's really entertaining, so you go along with her. Hondo was trying to kill kids, though, at one point. <laughs> so, like, he's... He was just trying him. to steal kyber crystals. If we've kids died him. along the way, that was just a occupational hazard. Until we see Fee do something as despicable as that, then I trust her more than I trust Hondo. But I know Hondo has changed since then. Or at least we, we I mean, we haven't seen him in a while, so we don't know what he's like now. Yeah. I mean, I think that this episode was to tell us that we can trust V. Yeah. That's what I get out of it, is that, yeah. you know, she's not a bad pirate. She is a good pirate. <laughs> And even though she tells tall tales, ah, okay, that kind of comes back. That sh She tells these tall tales, and Hunter doesn't know if he can trust a word that she says. But when we get to the end, he's like, all right, I, I can trust her actions, if not her words. Mm -hmm. Also, that for actually, anyone... That actually helped me a lot. That felt oh. like a better character arc for Hunter, that you know, actions speak louder than words and all that. And she's telling lies at the start, but she is acting as she should. Like Ned B. <laughs> uh, just for if anyone has come in that's new, 
the, we did have a much longer conversation about the possibility of them being Zepho earlier in the stream. So if you scrub back to maybe like 40, 30, 30 minutes to <laughs> 50 minutes ish, it's probably in there somewhere. Or watch tomorrow's video because that's what it's yeah. all about. Yeah, that too. But we've got uh, one more super chat here from Thanura Ravindra. There was another Daniel Chick one. Oh, my bad. Oh, not again. I keep missing the Daniel Chick ones. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Alex. Daniel, I read your last uh, Fallen Order super chat from like two weeks ago. Uh, or I guess it was a week ago. I read that at the start of yesterday's live stream on Fallen <laughs> Order. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the reason they said zero for two could be that they hunt for a Sith relic, then that brings them to Palps. If the if their next treasure hunt is a Sith relic, well, I hope they don't do that because yeah, that mm. that would be a good way to get Palpatine's attention. Palps is the last place they want to end up. Place. Huh. Place. Place. What place? What? Palps? Palps. Palps's place. I, I'm calling it Palps. That's where he lives. <laughs> Palps is cantina. <laughs> That's the bar he owns. Old Palpies. <laughs> when it, whenever he wants to get away from being an emperor, he just heads down to the bar and he slings drinks, pretends he's not the emperor. <laughs> Ooh. That would actually be... That's we were talking about it earlier. Make that a webisode. That, I mean, that sounds more Palpatine like... Palpatine running a bar. That sounds more like a robot chicken thing, but yeah. Yeah. Love that. Uh, okay, now we're at Thanura Ra Ravindra? Ravindra. Thanura Ravindra. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, current mood, week five of waiting for Delta Squad and the Bad Batch. More D. Bradley, please. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep. I mean, we know that the, the Republic Commandos, I guess they're Imperial Commandos now, but they were in the trailer. We know they're coming back. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think we we definitely saw Scorch in the trailer as well. So they'll be back. I don't know if it'll be all a Delta Squad, but... they Well, they also haven't... Have they, like, said for sure that that is Delta Squad or a member of Delta Squad? Yeah, well... I can't is Scorch, remember. I mean, is Scorch a member of Delta Squad? Yes. Okay, so that I think they did say, or at least heavily imply that that was him. He he matches the pain scheme that he had in the Clone Wars when they had like one single quick cameo. Yeah. So I I would assume that is still Scorch. Uh oh, I like this. If we see the Deltas, will they have the game VAs or will D do them? Excuse me, or will D do them? Ooh. I think I think they would just have D Bradley Baker do them. Probably. I can't, I can't remember but if they talked in the Clone Wars. Since since everything that The Last of Us is doing with, with the voice actors from that game, I wonder if they might actually give some of those people a chance to voice them. I think it would be too jarring. Like, I think it would confuse people because their their voices are wildly different in the game. Oh, OK. So I haven't played the game. So. Yeah, I, I don't think they would have. <laughs> I, I think it would make people go, wait, is that a clone or not? If it happened in the show. So, oh, it, yeah, because it could possibly sound like a TK trooper. Okay, MC Lego Boy says that D did voice him in the Clone Wars. I couldn't remember if they spoke or not. I remember them. They bring that uh, Jedi casket back, but I couldn't remember if they talked. So, yeah. But I, I it, at least one quarter of Delta Squad is going to be in season two, according to the trailer. Yes. Maybe more. Uh, Garth McMurray has another super chat here. We have Carla from Cheers with Sid. Now we have Palps Pub episode. 
maybe it would be too much like the villain pub on how it should have ended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not overly familiar with the, I, I kind of remember like the, the heroes, the superheroes sit around at a coffee shop and how it should have ended and talked. I don't really recall the villain pub, but yeah. But I do like all the cheers connections. Yeah. I mean, we need to get all of the cheers characters. We need Bryn Derlin, Sid, uh, Beckett. Has there been anyone else? I feel like there has. But at least those three need to wind up in a bar somewhere. We need Kelsey Grammer in Star Wars. <laughs> Please. Please and thank you. Uh, Tin Man with the next super chat. We're one step closer to mech fights in Star Wars. So close. So close. Honestly, like the the... The Mecha Zillow slash Zillow Beast idea is goofy as hell. I would love it if that's what they went and did. I think it would be Damn. so dumb, <laughs> but but in the best way. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> well, uh, we we've reached the end of the super chats, and uh, we are we've been going since eight in the morning. So we're going to go get some dinner, cook some dinner. Cook some dinner. We got some salmon some and some dinner. broccoli ready to go. <laughs> and uh, we will be back tomorrow to live stream our uh, Lego UCS Razor Crest. That's what we're in the middle of doing. Uh, that's like our third week of building that. So uh, if you have any more questions, come hang out, whether it's about Star Wars or anything else. We'll be hanging out tomorrow. So, yeah. Yeah, Thanks, the Lego everyone. streams are, are a ton of fun. It's basically an AMA. You can ask us about anything, but obviously we'll, we'll be happy to talk more Bad Batch or Mando or whatever. So, yeah, we'll be doing that tomorrow. We get a lot of Star Wars questions for some reason, but for you can't reason, ask us anything. You know, it's strange. <laughs> I don't know why. But, yeah. but thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. Uh, thank you. Uh, everyone who sent in super chats and uh, supported us uh, through super chats or just your questions or your likes or uh, your comments in the chat. Uh, thank you all so much and may the force be with you. <laughs>